This week, I've been planning and designing the wiring loom for my electric motorcycle build. And well, that'd be this. At first, it looks really daunting, but if you break it down step by step, it's really not that difficult. So the main differences between an electric motorcycle and a standard motorcycle is you've obviously got the high voltage circuit that powers the motor. So these are going to be two separate isolated systems and I'll start by showing you the 72 volt system. We'll start with the battery. This is obviously the 72 volt lithium ion box that I've been making in the last few weeks. This has got two multi plugs. One, the high voltage output going to the motor, the other for the charging system. Now we have a battery management system. This is actually inside the battery box on my bike. If you want to know any more about the battery management system, I actually went more in depth on the last video I made, so go check that out. So in my battery, I'm not going to run the discharge through the management system. So for the high voltage output, these go directly to the cells and bypass the management system completely. So this means the earth side of the charging socket is going directly to the battery management system, whereas the live side goes directly to the battery cell itself. So now we can move on to the motor controller and the motor itself. So this here is actually my motor controller and my motor and my motor is actually this here. It's a five kilowatt continuous brushless DC motor from Golden Motors. The motor controller is directly wired to the battery. I was planning on putting a fuse in this line between them, but turns out the motor controller itself has a fuse built in line, so I don't need to put one in myself. I'm just gonna make or 3D print a cap that goes over and covers all of these lives once it's all bolted in place. The motor is wired directly to the controller with the three phase wires. The motor also has this multi-plug which goes directly to the controller. This plug has everything from a temperature sensor to Hall effect sensors, so the controller knows where in the cycle the motor is. Maybe I should do a video on how these brushless motors work. They're actually really simple, but everyone knows that a simple design is usually the best. Now we need to get the inputs for the motor controller. This starts with a throttle assembly. This is basically a three wire variable resistor, so the motor controller knows how much power to output. The next part is the lock or key for the controller. Sounds easy as it's as simple as breaking the circuit to stop the motor working. But looking in the manual, this circuit needs a 72 volt feed directly from the controller. And as I want to use the original key from the 12 volt system that would also be an ignition switch for the lighting circuit and the whole bike, I need to run this via a solenoid. The switching side will be fed from the 72 volt board and the trigger will be from the 12 volt ignition feed. I'm also going to have the same issue with the regenerative braking circuit on this bike. Regenerative braking sounds really fancy, but all it needs to know is when you're braking and it will trigger this system. In essence, a motor and a generator are exactly the same thing, apart from if you put power into it, it will spin. If you manually turn it, it will put power out. And that's all you're doing with regenerative braking. You're allowing the momentum of the bike that's turning the motor to regenerate some electricity rather than you putting electricity into the motor to spin it. I hope I haven't dumbed that down too much, but in essence, that's all it is. There's a few variables like how, like how much you allow it to regen, how smooth it comes in, because you don't want to lightly touch the brake and the back wheel locks up because you're trying to regen too much. This is all controlled inside the motor and with this actual controller, I should be able to adapt these settings. So for the brake switch, I'm running it via a relay on the 72 volt feed. So now we can move on to the 12 volt circuit. And one of the biggest components we're missing from the electric motorcycle is a generator or alternator, which means I have to add a charging circuit because the lights and the dash are all gonna draw current from that 12 volt system. So I'm gonna run a DC to DC step down converter. I'll pick up off the battery controller to feed the converter. The 12 volt output will go directly to the 12 volt battery and I can earth it to the frame. And I can also earth the 12 volt battery onto the frame. 
My only issue now is how to limit the charging of the 12 volt battery. I don't know if I can actually control this inside the converter or if I'm gonna to have to put in a relay so when the bike's off, it's not gonna charge the 12 volt battery and drain the big 72 volt battery. We'll have to work this out. A quick note on the 12 volt battery. This only needs to be a tiny battery. It needs to hold enough capacity just to turn on the relay to power up the big 72 volt system. Once this is running, the converter can output 10 amps, which is more than enough to control and charge all of the lighting circuits and everything I've got going on in the bike. Is everyone still following along? I've tried to make this as simple as possible, but now we're just gonna move on to the standard 12 volt electrical motorcycle components. First, we need to fuse the system. Saying that, I should probably put a fuse into this charging system as well. I know that the maximum pull is gonna be around nine amps of all of the electrical components, so a single 15 amp fuse will be enough. will go directly to the ignition key where we will then distribute it. First I need to get power to that 72 volt relay. This will run via the kill switch on the handlebar so that I can use this to stop the motor at any time. Next up we need to get power to the left switch gear. From there, we can then wire in the headlight high and low, and then I can get power from this switch gear out to the horn. The brake light switch is constantly fed alive. Once this is triggered when the brake is pulled, the live circuit will run through the regen circuit and then onto the rear brake light. Next up is the indicators. The switch is on the left hand switch gear and this is powered via a flasher relay. I'm starting to run out of room, but I always like to do my wiring looms in the same sort of layout. With the left components at the bottom, right components at the top, and the front and rear components left and right. And yes, I know there's gonna be two indicators in the actual circuit, but for the sake of this diagram, I'm just gonna have one bulb shown for each left and right indicator circuit and then we need to add a feed from the indicator circuit to the idiot lights on the dash. Talking of the dash, we need to add a wheel speed sensor. This will give us our road speed. This is a three wire Hall effect sensor. And I almost forgot the high beam idiot light that goes to the dash. So the very last thing is the display. We're currently working on a TFT display that will have everything incorporated into one dash. This in itself is quite a large project, so for the meantime, I'm gonna run two separate dash. A generic motorcycle one that'll have my road speed and my idiot lights on it, but also a small display coming directly from the battery with just the battery information. This will have temperature, but also battery life and voltage. It's not ideal. It doesn't look as factory to have two separate dashes. It doesn't look very nice. And it'd be really good to have it all incorporated on one screen, but that's a longer term part of this project. And that's the whole loom planned. I've got all of the individual parts ordered and on their way. I just need to make it now.